picking up where we left off, we have a max date of purchase and the total amount of his purchases for James Donovan. So what if we're not just looking about James? What if we want to use everyone and find out their max date of purchase and how many products they purchased? Well, if we remove our where so that we're no longer caring specifically about him, we'll get that list. It's a list of one name and that name's max date of purchase and how many items they've bought. However, we've ran into an issue because we no longer have the ID requirement and there were people with multiple first names that were the same in our database. That's why these numbers are so high. So instead of grouping by first name, we need to group by name.id because that's a unique field. We'll know that we'll only have each person once even if that person has the same name. When we run this, that looks better. Now we have the totals for every individual person that's in our database, even if they have the same name. And we could further refine it with our having clause. We could also say having a max DOP. We did rename that accidentally up here, but it's fine. Greater than 10. And now we've even further refined it so that we only have the most high purchased people in our list. But what if we wanted to add some more information? What if instead of looking for the highest people, we wanted to see the total that each person bought of each product? So let's get rid of that having for a moment and we'll add another group by. We'll do that by simply adding a comma and now saying name. Because name is the field that we have called the name of the product. Now when we run this, we'll see that we not only have the max date of purchase for James Donovan, but we have two of them. That's because this is the max date when he bought flour, and this is the max date when he bought butter. And he's actually bought butter twice. That's why his max of butter is 15, but his amount is only seven because one of the times he bought seven and one of the times he bought eight. So this breaks it out even further. Now we have a list of the total of each product that every person has purchased as well as the most recent time they've purchased that product. That's starting to sound like some real business data, isn't it? Now one of the things that often comes up is if we're selecting their name and there may be other personal information like their address or phone number, how do we make sure that we get the most recent record? Since we're currently selecting what amounts to a random one of these in the group, how do we ensure that we get the most recent and up-to-date information? Well, we're going to have to add some more content. It's called subqueries. And subqueries are going to be what we cover in the next video, as well as the uses for the null value. This has been brought to you by CreativeOnlineSchool.com.